everyone. I'm so glad you're back with me today. Today we're going to talk about binding. Actually, we're going to talk about how people do the figure out how many strips they need to bind their quilt. Now, this is kind of, there's been lots of tutorials out on, on uh, the web about how many, how to calculate, but I'm going to show you how I calculate, how I was taught to calculate this. So, the first thing we need to know about your, the quilt that you're binding is the length and the width, right? Now, when you're doing a lot of piecing, what happens is that sometimes the, the, your quarter inch is fat, sometimes it's skinny, it's, sometimes it's all over, it's fine. Stop worrying, number one, stop worrying that, you're, that you're, your, your quarter inch is not perfect. Right, because it's meant to be fun, it's not meant to drive you crazy. But we have to now consider the average length and the average width. So I was told you take the outside measurement, a middle measurement, and then somewhere else in the quilt. And you, you add it up and you kind of like, okay, this is the average of the length. And you do the same with the width. You do the average of the width. You take, you know, measure it three different places and let's say your quilt, the length of it is 70 inches and then someplace else it's 72 inches and then someplace else it's 71 inches. The average is 71 but so the quilt could be bowed like this. So you're better off almost to go give yourself a little wiggle room, go 72 you know, that's okay too. Because if you make a little bit too much binding, you put it in your string bin or you put it in your scrap bindings, it's fine. But this is kind of like the average and then kind of give yourself some wiggle room. So let's say for instance, we're gonna do a twin quilt. Now the twin quilt I've made is 71 by, or 70 by 90. So the, the width of it is 70 inches. The length is 90 inches. Right, and that's my average. Yeah, okay, you get it, it's the average. So what you're gonna do is multiply that by two, because there's two sides that are that long, right? So this is equals 180 and 140, right? Inches and inches, okay? Then you add those two together and you're gonna get 0 to 3 inches. So you're going to need 320 inches of binding. Okay? Now, how do you know that if you're using scrap, you have to actually measure out like 320 inches. Like if you're using scrap pieces that aren't full length of or full width of fabric, you know, you're going to have to measure out 320 and then give yourself a little wiggle room like a foot or so, right? So now if we're using full width of fabric, width of fabric strips, we're going to be dividing this by 40 inches because the average length of a width of fabric strip is 40 inches, it's actually 42, but but the average is like 40, 41, somewhere in there. If you're using older fabric and it's a 33, that was, you have to actually measure it, but what we get in quilt shops today, the average is about 40 inches. So now this is going to be eight. Eight strips, right? Let's see, let's take, let's, let's take the math, let's do the math. So we're just gonna clear this 320 divided by 40 equals 8. 8 strips. Now 8 strips, if you've been generous on this length and generous with your width, let's say you've taken the longest, let's say you measured, you know, 88, 89, and 90, but you're going to use 90 as your length, you've got some wiggle room. And if you had, let's say, 68 and a half, 69 and three quarters, and 70, well, you've already built in a little wiggle room. This also is big, building in a little wiggle room, right? So now eight strips should do you. It should. It should work. Even though you're going around the corners and everything else, right? 
So I know that sounds like a lot of strips that you would sew together. And when you sew your binding strips together, you take one binding strip and you take another binding strip and then you sew across this angle here in order to meet them up. So when you unfold them, they line like this, right? So that's, how, and you basically for, if you're looking at 42 inch, you still have a little bit of wiggle room. So, yeah, you have to, okay. Now that's just putting it like the plain with the fabric strips. If you're doing binding on a bias or other, there's different ways of calculating the bias. And bias is used for uh, very traditional quilting or it's also used for uh, when you're doing curves. So if you have a scalloped edge on your on the edge of your quilt instead of a straight edge like you would have on a border or when you you know go up to the, your block. Bias binding is used very differently and the calculation for bias binding is very different. Very different. Um, I also like to use a flange binding. My friend showed me a flange binding and we're going to do a tutorial on that here up next. And this flange binding is a dream to sew. You sew it on the back, you flip it over, you sew in the flange. And it looks, it's also known as uh, faux piping. Faux piping. And uh, the other one that I have, have ran across, I've never tried it because I'm not really sure. It, I don't make wall hanging, so I'm not kind of is they basically do, um, they put the binding on and then they press everything to the back so it looks like a picture, a portrait, right? So it's kind of an art binding where everything gets pressed behind, including the binding. So I haven't, I don't make a lot of art, like I don't make a lot of wall art. So this is one of the things that we're looking at. So yeah, it looks like a picture frame. Think of it as a picture frame. And this one's for curves. The bias, I'll just put the bias ones in for curves. The, out of all of all of the different uh, bindings, I will admit that the bias one is strongest because on a regular binding, when you fold it over, you have just the few little threads that are here to, to protect your quilt, right? That's what binding does, it protects your quilt. On a bias, it's woven like this. So when you are folding that on the bias, you've got twice as many fabric threads to go through, right? So if this, and, but it, and it does work around curves beautifully. The strongest one is the bias and that's the traditional one. So I am hoping this math helped for our tutorial because it's kind of like, this can get very, very strange very quickly. And we don't want to frighten you off on how many strips and all that. Like if you buy a pattern, they'll tell you what the measurements are supposed to be and how many strips. If you buy a kit, they'll even have, okay, this fabric is the strips and this is what you cut and this is how wide you cut it and everything, right? They'll, they'll explain it all to you. But I hope this was easier and it wasn't that painful math you were expecting because if you're watching this in the morning, I don't know about you, but in the morning, I cannot do math. I just, no, not until I've had a cup of coffee and then I'm kind of like, oh, do I have to do math? But anyways, so here it is. That's the binding math. How many strips do I need? And this is how I calculate it out. And I hope you have a blissful day. I hope you have a great week. And I hope to see you back because the next one we're going to try and do is we're going to try and show you how to do flange binding. That's my favorite way of, of uh, finishing off a quilt. And I have, my friend showed me this years ago, and I love it. I just love it. It's my last opportunity to add a beautiful pop of color. So I hope you come back. We'll see you soon. You take care. Bye. If you have questions about what you saw in this video, or you have ideas for content, or something you want to see us do, Please put those comments in the description below, but also while you're there, like, share, and subscribe with your friends. That would really help us out.
Okay, I want to thank you and have a great day.